I've written a beautiful song, a tribute to Singapore, my favourite city in the whole world, it goes like this. I've got to there and then I haven't moved on, I got stuck, a little bit of a mental block. So I was thinking, for me to get out of this mental block, I need to time travel. Now as a kid, I wanted to time travel, I wanted to go back in time, I wanted to stop the dinosaurs from getting extinct. And then I thought, if I could get a T-Rex back, that would be great. But then going back to the family album, we have a couple of T-Rexes between you and me, so I won't get into that. But today, in Singapore, I'm going to take you to a place no one has ever been to before. Well, they have, but I haven't. So come with me, I won't tell you where it is. But yes, we're going back in time, and I'll end with a rhyme. Come on, baby, sing a song. Follow me. You know, my wife has said very often, I don't let her out in public for various reasons. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She said that I belong in a museum. So I'm thinking, finally, I should actually come to a museum and do a podcast from a museum. And then, you know, let's see how it goes, whether I'm the right fit. So I'm here with Alvin Yap, who dresses like this just to say hello to me. But uh, what a wonderful place. Uh, we're going to talk about the Peranakan, and it's right there, so I don't make a mistake with the pronunciation culture. We're in this beautiful place. What's the place called? It's called the Intan. It's my home. It's also a museum. We're in the Intan Museum. You are the boss. Yes. Okay, let me just explain, because the whole place, it's his house. Yes. A house which is also a museum. And every single square inch has something fantastic, some artifacts, some sort of sculpture, some trinket, some memorabilia, all that kind of stuff, which we'll sort of look at at some point. Alvin, let me start at the beginning. I want to talk a little bit about rediscovering Peranakan culture because we have to explain to the people what that is. Peranakan culture, no, started huh. around 200 years ago mm -hmm. when China wasn't very wealthy. Okay. So what do you do when you're not wealthy? You go out and work, right? Like, so the Chinese men came to work and to send money back home to China. Right. Their wives stayed home because they took care of the children, the family, and the farm. So only the men came. And then they ended up saying, hey, this place, ah, not so bad. Lah. The weather not so cold like in China. Ah. Yeah. And so what they did was they ended up marrying the local oh, or Malay women. Not, naughty boys. Uh, so this is how the culture started now. The men came from China, the women were locals, locals. or Malays. And because we were a British colony, so mm -hmm. we started to embrace very strong European culture. That is the <laughs> typical narration of Peranakan culture. But yeah, it's not did right. you know there were also Indian Peranakans? So these Indian men came huh. as traders yeah. and they also wanted to live here. So what did they do? They ended up marrying the local. So they came here because it was for essential purposes. Lah. Right. So they had their families here, they had their businesses here. And that was how Peranakan culture started. Right. With a mix of Chinese, Malay, and in this case, sometimes Indian culture. Wow. Yes. So that's quite a bit of a hybrid. I thought it was only two. So are you a descendant of this? Yeah. So I am Peranakan. My parents are Peranakan. As a young boy, I was clueless about my own culture. Unlike in India, where you're taught your culture, your heritage, your political party, and your religion. So I grew up mm. not knowing anything about my own culture. And that got me on this journey of self-reflection and wanting to know who I was. And what did I do? I went around collecting Peranakan antiques. Okay, now they can't see what we can see, but yes. every inch is a, a Peranakan antique. So it was never meant to be a museum. Cyrus, it was my private this collection. Is your house. Yeah, my own home lah. People started wanting to visit me, like you and many others, and then eventually it says, "Okay lah, where did you become a museum ah?" So that was how we became a museum. Between ten years ago. So let's understand. You just uh, collected things from different places. Yes. As a person trying to find his own identity and culture. Yeah. So I went, and then somebody said to you, "Bro, what are you doing? Why don't you yeah, go yeah. out and just, you know?" Yeah. So you are almost right. I went around collecting Peranakan antiques. Did you for pay for them collection. or you just pick them up and people are sleeping? Pay money, Singapore, oh. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Clean yeah. society. Yeah. Unheard of. Huh. But the only thing is, somebody came and hosted somebody. It was <laughs> the government of Singapore. La. And? The National Heritage Board came knocking at my door and said, hey, you got so many visitors you know, from all around the world. Why did you just become a museum? Oh, so it was a good knock. It was a good knock. In our part yeah. of the world, the government is knocking at the door. It's not a good knock. <laughs> they don't knock and say, Pani, please. Yes. <laughs> So that was how we became a museum in the year 2010. Wow, that's yes. a fantastic story. So it's also Underwood. it's a complete accident story. It was accidentally. So, so some people happened. call me an accidental museum because it was never meant to be a museum. 
Okay, let's move on. Yes. I've got some formal questions which my uh, four-year-old niece has written. Thank you. Uh, because she is the right fit for this show. From flying and serving on Singapore national career career to hosting people in your home museum, what made you change your career plan? So let's go back in time. This was your actual job, and I, people don't know it's a high-paying job. Uh, we're one of the best airlines in the world. So. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my first employee is Singapore Airlines. Mm -hmm. uh, I was what you call a station manager. Do you know what a station manager does? I absolutely do, but they don't. So better you tell them. And that way we all understand what they do rather than I boast and sound arrogant. I know, I know, I mean, why do that? When your flight gets delayed, Laid. when your baggage goes missing, missing, when you cannot find your business class lounge, lounge, it's all my fault. Yep, that's what I was going to say. And then you spoke fast to Alvin and... I was stationed in San Francisco oh. and, uh, and I said, you know, enough, enough of American culture. Send me somewhere more exciting. And honestly, I chose India. Really? I swear to God, I chose India. I wanted to go to Calcutta. Oh. And they said, we're sending you to Dhaka, Bangladesh. And I said, where is Dhaka, Bangladesh? And for the next two and a half years, I lived in Bangladesh. I eat, I sleep, I laugh, and today, I speak Bangladesh. And good time? Kumalo. How many Excellent. Uh, Parak Paranakan people in Bangladesh? Zero, no? Only one. Eight. <laughs> Eight John, no? Only me. Yeah. So here's the, the question we try to ask you. So why the segue then from a very successful career and you spent many years there, your yeah. station manager pretty high up, why would you then come back and do this? This of course came by accident, but why did you leave? So I did not leave for the museum. I actually joined my father's business. Oh. Yes, it's a family business. I'm in the printing business. Oh, wow. I put stickers on buses, taxis, yeah. and trains. Yeah. So I am a sticker man. Okay. Yes. So my dad needed me to be, join the business or I was I was inclined to join the family business. And so when I resigned and I continued my passion and see what it has brought me. After 21 years, never did I realize I have somebody as wonderful as you sitting in my front. I room. am the most famous Indian since uh, a guy called Chandragupta the first, <laughs> who conquered various parts of Asia. Uh, so after that, they, they take my name in the history books. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, all right. You know, I don't have to understand what you're saying to know that it's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Do you have some anecdotes which are, let's say, out of the ordinary? So everything you see in this house museum or this home museum is collected by me. Nothing is from the family, right? So everything here comes as a story. But I guess for me, one of the most interesting stories would be this lovely pair of chairs behind us because um, this came from a very close family friend and they are related to one of the ex-presidents of Singapore. Oh, wow. And he would sit the on big one man of himself? these chairs um, every Lunar New Year. Wow. So when you visit the Intan, uh, there are two chairs here. There's a 50% chance you're sitting on the chair where the Singapore president used to sit. Which means there's a 50% chance that one day you could become the president of Singapore, right? Yes. Reverse the karma. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? You, you do know that our current president is Indian, right? Uh, I knew that. <laughs> I'm sure. I did my homework. I don't yes. just get off a plane and yes. walk into any shop in Singapore and say, come on, let's sell the culture. I do my homework. No. Give us a little idea about how you tour the house. What are the things yeah. we can get to see? So a visit like this will start from the front hall. We're going to go around the house. We're going to go upstairs. And then we're going to end with some lovely, traditional Peranakan sweets. Uh, before we go into this uh, quick break, there's one last thing we need to tell everyone. Yeah. At some point, he's going to perform. You're also a pretty good singer, I heard. And mm. pianist. I'll try. You are? I try. Okay, Let's so he's just being modest. You better be, because yeah. i got no, no talent on the show. All I can say uh. is, Baba Cyrus, magic happens at Intan. Magic happens at Intan. But for now, we're going to go and check out this uh, wonderful culture on a street called… What, what's the street called? Juchet Terrace. Let me say it correctly. I've got to get these names right. Katong. Uh, Juchet. Balu. Not bad. Not bad. Like. 80%? Can't can't like. can't, not bad. Huh? Like. Bye -bye. Ah, okay. Stop changing languages. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm struggling with one. Alright, we'll take a quick break. Uh, he's been lovely. Alvin Yap. And when we come back, a little bit more to talk ha, about… Ha, the e ha, 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, auntie. Hello, I'm here, Juchiat Road, very famous for the Peranakan shop houses with their ornate tiling, unique styling, craftsmanship, colours. 
outstanding. Just take a look. It's like a breeze of different colors. It's fabulous on the senses. And also, this is famous for lots of influencers and Instagrammers to come and do their little reels and things like that and become superbly famous. They guarantee you 50% upgrade in followership immediately. Okay, the truth is, Ju Chiat, uh, the road inspires artists and art. So if you look around, there's a lady there in the background. I want to point because it's impolite. So I won't point. And she's getting ready to do her painting. And I'm distracted by a lovely doggy. Hello, Babu. How are you? Can I touch? Okay. Babu's gone away to do a susu. Oh, our first susu. That's fantastic. Excellent. And um, this gentleman here, also an artist, preparing, uh, I presume, to paint or sketch. So as the day gets uh, longer, more and more people come here to paint and sketch. I think I should also do some painting. Let me see where. I've got my pencil ready. Here we go. The art form of Cyrus says. Hey, how are you? These are all my houses, as you can see. Early investments in Singapore back in the 80s. My financial decisions, my grandfather made. Thank you, grandfather. And all this is ours. Everything is ours. Uh, not the people. The people are not technically ours, but everything else is ours. Okay. Off we go. Still, work in progress, just like my marriage. We're trying to figure things out. You'll see this here and there, but for most of it, 90%, it's poetry in motion. Ju Chat Road. Okay, I've reached. It's called, just take a look, Kim Chu Kui Chang. Or known as Kim Chu, in short. Very famous for the sweets and artifacts. We'll go and check it out. I brought my own cycle because I want to walk the talk. I want to be the sustainability that I talk about. So, no more petrol, diesel, even EVMs. Just the cycle for me. Uh, check out the board saying, welcome, Cyrus says to Kim Chu. Uh, don't read it now. Just take my word for it. Come on, come on. Oh. Prawn chili. I think this is achar basically. Some sort of pumpkin seeds with almond crisps. So all kinds of savory items as well. There's namkeen stuff and non-namkeen stuff. Everything is here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you give us something sweet to taste? Uh, we have like mini or uh, Something smaller? This is a smaller size. Okay, okay. <laughs> the Nyonya Chang chicken, which is a wind Water winter melon and shredded chicken meat. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of Cyrus Brocha? Very famous actor. <laughs> Huge success. You know Johnny Depp? No Johnny Depp? DiCaprio? Leonardo DiCaprio? No? Okay, so these are the three biggest names in the world of entertainment. Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio, Cyrus Brocha. Yeah, I just was just checking. Sorry. Let's have one. I can't believe she doesn't know Cyrus Brochure. This is how the dumpling looks like. Oh, looks like a samosa. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a samosa. It's half samosa, half dumpling. It's made out of rice and I think inside there is a chicken. of chicken. Yeah, yeah. Ankita eats it. Ankita pays for it. She'll pay for it. Don't worry. Yeah. Let's check out the upstairs quickly. Of course, there's lots more. You can buy all, uh, if you're a tourist, obviously there are clothes, there's stuff, linen stuff and silk stuff and everything at the back there. And there's all these things you can buy, small trinkets and posters and uh, postcards and cards that you can send home. It's all here. Oh my God. There's a rooster. A live rooster lying in a bed. It's almost like a Mughal painting for me, but it's actually more Chinese. Irani cafe, same marbles, same kind of chairs. See how the cultures are closer than they think? Humanity is closer than you think. We are all the same. Hello, hello check. Cyrus says, in Singapore, showing now. Cyrus says, Cyrus says, Cyrus says, Cyrus says, Cyrus says, Cyrus says, Cyrus says. Super sound here, yeah. really. Ma'am, yes? are you sure you haven't heard of Cyrus Brocha? Please. It's it's a sad day for me. No, I'm just kidding. Nice to meet you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude a little trip inside here, a taste of the Panakan way of life. And off we go to mainstream Singapore for me to rest my weary legs on somebody's head. Uh, production guy. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, now let's get back to the brass tacks of questions that we have not asked. And here they are. When exactly did you start collecting the unique treasures? You did mention by accident you picked up things to find your own identity. Mm. But at what age was that exactly? Yeah, at the age of 17, 18, when I had my first uh, driving license and I took my dad's car and I went out what we call garage hunting. I'm not sure you have that in India. Garage hunting where they sell things. Yeah, lah. then we go to people's house, yeah, they yeah. have things to sell or to, to yeah. get rid of. And then I, I found on the newspapers there was an ad and I yeah. went and I found something and I. So you again accidentally just picked up stuff because you're just yeah. looking at it and you brought it home. Yeah. Yeah. So I With ran no, around looking for things that I could learn about my What culture. is the first thing? Oh, is this… Uh, interestingly, it's very Indian. What is it? <laughs> it's a planter's chair. Oh, it's there yeah, somewhere? Of you, course. You show yeah. it to us. It's but, but it's upstairs, which is secret. What is a planter's chair? I don't really know, but… You Indian know. <laughs> Put, putting me under so much pressure. <laughs> what is a planter's chair? Planter's chair! You're googling it? I show you lah. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Oh, there! Ah, thank you! We don't… Who says thank planter's you. chair? Then what is it? Yeah, we, we say… Yeah, say, say, say. Dada ka chair hai. Grandfather's chair. Same, no? But planter, I, I, I didn't you, understand. You plant your grandfather. Yeah, you put, yeah. <laughs> I, I, we'll show you a picture of that because it'll take time. I don't know whether we can. Let's try our best. Here it is, one of those chairs where you put the thing out and, and the legs spread and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is some very nice. Yeah, yeah, you some put the thing out. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> don't catch on. Don't catch on. Don't catch on. You can okay. jump like anything drop with I can't bend now. It's not okay. worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. what's the point? There's nothing great in that. Okay. Everything great is here in oh, you. Yo, yo. You represent a whole culture. Ay, yo, yo. The revival, the renaissance of an entire culture in one man's hands by accident. He didn't yeah. even plan it. Next thing you know, it's all over here. Uh, we noticed that you have all these young uh, interns who've come in here. Yes. What, are they, what, what job do they do? Are they going to learn to be guides or I've what? I've got no idea. <laughs> they just run away as one. So, <laughs> what some of the work we do is with, uh, with the Ministry of Education, with the schools, right? So, uh, every year we support some of these uh, oh. kids who want to learn about culture and maybe one day they can become our minister for uh, culture and heritage. One day they become a museum creator. But do, never they, know. do they have Peranakan roots? Are they also or not? No. All they have is an interest in culture and heritage. Okay. And that's where we see them in. Okay. So uh, tell us some nice anecdotes from this place, like yeah. uh, various people's reactions and things like that. Yeah. So people are wondering whether is it a home, is it a museum. So I always give them some time to settle down, and then they ask strange questions. You know, they ask questions like, uh, "How do you clean your house?" Good uh, question. And my answer. So would how be, do you? I, the, the, the easiest answer is, "Are you?" It okay? is. So you ask me. How do you clean your house? Are you free tomorrow? We have a volunteer oh, program. Oh, nice, nice. Well played. Yes. But I'll tell you one thing, it's extremely clean. Thank you. No, Has no. anyone uh, tried to take anything? Uh, not that I know of. Huh? Yeah. No, no, but to be truth, to be fair, uh, somebody did take something. What? <laughs> it was a hand cream for my restroom. Why? How I know? It's time before we wrap up yeah. to promise them something we promised them in the beginning, which is you're a performer as well. But um, before we do that, sorry, sir, I have one request from you. I have no money, Alvin. Then I know. Ah, oh, good. Go ahead. <laughs> what is the one thing you would like to know either about the museum or me as a museum owner? So, are we allowed to ask uh, what the charges are for a quick tour? Yes. yes. So, if you go online, you'll see we have different experiences from tea to lunch and dinner experiences. They start at about 60 Singapore dollars all the way to… It depends what you want to. Okay, so tea is less and lunch will be more. Of course. That kind of thing. Yeah. Is there a dinner? Of course. The intern is a one-man show. I run… I'm the… Host, I'm the collector, I'm the cleaner, uh, I'm the entertainer. So, Accountant. Show sure, everything, no? Yeah. So if I say okay, means okay. So if you are if you arrive in Singapore early and your hotel is not ready for you, ah. come for breakfast. Oh, great idea. If you are here, and you're so that busy always happens. exploring yeah. all the wonderful attractions in Singapore on the way back, come here for supper. Wow. Yeah. We are always open. Uh, we have to wind up uh, getting a behavior which is not mentionable to Keep. young children, the way this man is jumping up and down and screaming and shouting. But uh, I have a line for you. How about the interns at Intan? Because you've got these oh, interns. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, not Intern bad. at Intan. Not bad, uh, not bad. I will put some uh, not Hindi bad. music in the background. We'll have some more instruments going. Intern, you sing. Intern at Intan. You like it? Oh, opening a whole new market for you okay. with my talent. Thank you. Speaking of talent, as we say bye. And by the way, guys, he's been very sporting. It's a wonderful place. Please come and check it out. Is you can see what a gracious man he is, and he's full of positive energy. You'll have a great time. So we're, we're going to end with with the song. So what are you going to play for us? What are you going to sing? Uh, I I know this. Uh, I wrote this song. English for, song, no English song. English song. Happy birthday. Yeah.
Oh, you all please lah. Come, 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 come. So are we going over to the piano now? Yeah. yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. Um, this is one of my favorite Peranakan songs. Actually, it's an Indonesian song. Uh, and it's about a old cockatoo. And I'm going to teach you the song. There'll be a verse that I'll sing and the chorus, all you need to do is ooh la la. I can do ooh la la. Can you do ooh la la? I'll practice right now. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. One, two, three. Ooh la la. Okay. Burung kakak tua Hingga di jelida Nini sudah tua Giginya tinggal tua You ready? Letrum, 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 ulala Letrum, 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 ulala Letrum, 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 ulala you Burung kakak tua. Woo! Woo! That's great, y'all. Bring it! Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. We have to say bye here. Thank you so much. This is very entertaining. And we have one thing to do, an activity with you. Okay. Which is going to skirt around this room and find some treasures. Of course. Welcome to the Intan. This is my home. It's yeah. also a museum. Uh, I'd love to show you around. Uh, yeah. Come, come on in. So, can we start here? Of course. So, this is what we call a... Uh, ancestral altar. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pranakas were very Chinese and what's important was, hey, careful, la, 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 la. this is a museum. Man. I can't touch. Yeah, of course but not. There's, there's, there's no sign saying don't touch. You can touch me. I can touch you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so everything here you see is connected by me. And okay. this is, is what's is a typical ancestral altar. What is this? It looks yeah. like a temple face. Uh, well, it's almost like a temple. It's what we call a chanab. It's a prayer object for the Pranakans. Oh. This is my home. Right. But it turns into a museum yeah. when a visitor like you walks in. Right. So. Well, the questions you ask, the things that you see with your eyes, mm -hmm. makes it a museum. Yeah, so the Peranakans would have such Chinese furniture, mm -hmm. so that visitors like you will know we are Chinese. Yeah, this was very important. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, how, what do you think? I mean, is it fair to ask, what would this be worth for a collector? Right. So, in a world of antique collecting, the mm. value of an object is just dependent on two persons. You mm -hmm. and me. It might worth a million dollars to me, but if it's only worth 10 rupees to, to the you, buyer. Okay. It's only 10 rupees. A lesson in marketing. A yes. One wonderful lesson. So, at the end of the day, it's just you and me. How okay. much we value the piece. Everything is handpicked piece by piece by piece, which means everything here has a story, which essentially means that we are now going back in time. This right. was how the Pranakan used to live. These pieces how, existed how, how, about 200 years ago. 200 years, okay. You know, everything you see here is collected. Oh. But, but I want to show you something, Baba yeah. Cyrus. These are what we call spittoons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so listen carefully. This is a very interesting story with an Indian connection, which I'm sure none moment, of you know. The moment he says spit yeah. is an Indian connection. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So, mm. these are spittoons because the Peranakan ladies love to chew beetle or better leaf. Oh. Very much like, like Indian us. culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But only the ladies chew. Well, why not the men? It's like that one. Oh, that's yeah, really something, unfair. Something you don't know. Yeah. Okay, anyway, the Nonias, or what we call the Pranakan women, would chew bitter leaf and they would spit them into these beautiful containers. Now, question number one Where do you think these beautiful pieces came from? India. No, la. This came from Czechoslovakia wow. and Poland. The Pranakans oh. were so wealthy, they were commissioning enamel wares from Eastern Europe. For their Europe. spitting, they yeah. would get stuff from Prague. They were wow. so wealthy. These enamel wares that you see on my table and on the steps, 99% mm -hmm. of them were sourced from India. Oh. I have an Indian runner that scouts the whole of yeah. India, especially in the homes of the Parsis. Yeah. When an antique collector cannot find enough antiques to collect, we collect other things. Here is a collection of Catholic icons yeah. in different Asian identity. Yeah. Many products are Catholics, including my family and myself. Yeah. And so you here you have uh, the Virgin Mary and nativity scenes from around the world. Amongst all this, there is a nativity See. from India. So what here you have Jesus, Mary, Joseph in front of what looks like almost the 
Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal and an elephant in and a peacock. And there's a sheep here, an elephant in a... Clearly, okay. this is proof. <laughs> I don't want to start any controversy, but this is proof. We're onto something. I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> in my country, everybody takes offense, so I have to be very careful. But yes, there is something in this. Yeah. My wow. favorite, yeah. Cyrus, yeah. my favorite has to be Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Uh, from a football team, Real Madrid and Barcelona. Wow. Can, we, can, we, can we pick that up? Yeah. Is that allowed? For the football lovers, <laughs> if, you, if you love yeah. your spirituality and you love your football, and yeah. sometimes you can say they're the same thing. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I've got tears in my eyes. I'm crying. I'll tell you why. My pants are very tight. That's one reason. The other, Singapore. What a beautiful place. Tears of joy. What I've experienced. The sounds, the songs, the love. Lovely people. Nobody gets angry. It's great. And everybody's on time. I'm so happy here. I can't tell you. I've eaten Singapore, drunk Singapore, felt Singapore, sang Singapore. And now it's time for me to tell you, in the words of the greatest poet of the 21st century, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. Until then, I'll leave you with this lovely song and dance routine that is a Desi Singapore mix routine that I've created called Indian in Singapore. I'm an Indian in Singapore. I'm an Indian in Singapore.